Hi, I'm Diasha. In the previous lessons of this series, we completed investigations into the reactions of the different metals and oxygen. We also showed what happened when metal oxides reacted with water. In each of these reactions, we have shown how to represent the chemical changes taking place by writing balanced chemical equations. In this lesson, we continue our investigations and will find out what happens when the alkali metals react with water. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to, for each reaction, describe your observations, write balanced chemical equations. As you know, water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. It is therefore very possible that one of these gases will be released during a reaction of a metal with water. In order for us to establish the presence of these gases, we need to know what the tests for both oxygen and hydrogen are. Hydrogen gas explodes with oxygen in the air when the mixture is heated. When large amounts of each gas are mixed together, this explosion is very powerful. Small amounts of hydrogen and oxygen, however, produce a small, high-pitched popping sound in the presence of a flame. This sound is the confirming test that hydrogen is present or has been formed during a reaction. This reaction also produces water vapour in very small amounts. Let's look at a demonstration. A test tube is filled with hydrogen gas. The test tube is then held upside down. Hydrogen is less dense than air and will rise in the test tube. This prevents it from escaping. A match is brought close to the mouth of the test tube, where the oxygen in the air and the hydrogen gas mix. You should hear a popping sound. If a similar experiment is done with a slightly larger amount of hydrogen gas, the results can get quite spectacular. Look at this. An empty 2-litre plastic bottle is filled with hydrogen and oxygen using a chemical process. The bottle is then placed on a flat surface clear of obstruction on its side. Using a long splint, the gas at the mouth of the bottle is set alight. Why do you think the bottle took off like a rocket? Well, the bottle pushes out the exploding gas. Escaping gas pushes back against the bottle, moving it forward. This experiment can be very dangerous and should not be attempted without supervision. Next, we look at the demonstration for the test for oxygen. Placing a glowing splint into a gas suspected of being oxygen tests for the presence of oxygen. The splint will burst into flame. This is a positive test to confirm the presence of oxygen. Now that we know what the tests for hydrogen and oxygen gas are, we will proceed with our investigations into the reactions of the alkali metals in water. For these experiments, you need a large trough filled with water at room temperature. Similar sized pieces of the metals will be placed into the water and we will observe each reaction in detail. First, a piece of lithium is placed in the trough. The lithium floats on top of the water and makes a hissing sound. You should be able to see a whitish gas rising off the metal. Ignite a long wooden splint and bring it close to the lithium metal. A popping sound is heard. When red litmus paper is dipped into the water, the litmus paper turns blue. What are the conclusions we can make from our observations? The popping sound indicates that hydrogen gas is being released as one of the products of this reaction. The blue colour of the litmus means that a basic solution is formed during the reaction. So, we can deduce that the other product of this reaction is lithium hydroxide. I think we should write down the word equation for this chemical reaction. Lithium plus water reacts to form lithium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. This word equation is correct, but does not accurately represent the changes taking place. We still need to translate to chemistry by writing down the formulae of the substances that are reacting. Lithium has the symbol Li. Water has the formula H2O. Lithium hydroxide is LiOH. And hydrogen is a diatomic molecule with a formula 
of H2. The next step is to check that the equation is balanced. Can you see that there are two hydrogen atoms on the left hand side and on the right hand side there is one hydrogen atom in the hydroxide and two in the hydrogen molecule. Hydrogen cannot be created in the reaction so we must have started with more hydrogen. Let's write a two in front of the water molecule. This means we have four hydrogens at the start. On the right hand side we have an odd number of hydrogens. I want them to be even to balance the even number in the reactants. The simplest way to do this is to write a 2 in front of the LiOH. The hydrogens and oxygens are now balanced but there are two lithium atoms in the product and only one shown with the reactants. We need to show that two lithium atoms are required at the start of the reaction. We do this by writing a 2 in front of the Li on the left hand side of the equation. Finally, we have a balanced equation showing the simplest ratio of substances reacting. Next, we will look as this experiment is repeated with sodium. When a piece of sodium is placed in a trough of water at room temperature, you will observe that the sodium moves along the surface of the water quite quickly and melts into a little silver sphere. A gas given off from the sodium produces a popping sound as soon as a burning splint is brought near the metal in the water. When a piece of red litmus is dipped into the water, it turns blue, indicating that a basic solution has formed. From these results, we conclude that two products were formed during the reaction. Do you know what they are? Well, here is the chemical equation for this reaction. Have a look and compare your answer to mine. Sodium plus water react to form sodium hydroxide and hydrogen, or as a formula equation, Na plus H2O react to form NaOH plus H2. The balanced equation for this reaction will read 2Na plus 2H2O reacts to form 2NaOH plus H2. We have previously predicted that the reactivity of elements in group 1 increase from the top to the bottom of the group. Does this information help you to predict something about the vigor of the reaction of potassium and water that you are about to see? The piece of potassium reacts so fast that it explodes spontaneously and ignites with its characteristic lilac purple flame. The reaction is much more vigorous than either of the previous reactions and a large amount of gas is released very quickly. A high pitched popping sound can be heard as the potassium whizzes around the top of the water. Red litmus paper turns blue when dipped into the water. The popping sound confirms that the gas that is being released is hydrogen. The color change in the red litmus paper indicates that a basic hydroxide has formed. Now, with this information at your fingertips, I'm sure you are ready to complete today's task. Write down the balanced chemical equations for potassium plus water, cesium plus water. I hope you will join me for our final lesson in this series where we will look at the reactions of the alkaline earth metals in water. Until then, goodbye. Yeah.